In this video, we're going to talk about uh, properties of parabolas a little bit further. Okay, one of those properties is something called the axis of symmetry. Uh, so here's a graph of a parabola, and you probably notice that it is very symmetrical. And what it is symmetrical about is it's symmetrical about some vertical line called the axis of symmetry. Like that, okay? And what you have is you've, if you have any two points at the same height on the parabola, let's say that point right there and that point right there, is that the axis of symmetry is equidistant, right in the middle. Okay, of, of a horizontal line. So if I were to form a horizontal line between these two points, the axis of symmetry lies directly in the middle. It's a vertical line that passes right through the center of the parabola. So how can I determine the axis of symmetry just based on the graph? Well, I, I do have some points here that I can I can clearly identify. So for example, uh, if this is the point origin right here, I go over one, two, and up one, two, three, here I have the point negative 2, 3. And if I go over 1 and up 3, here I have the point 1, 3. Okay, so <clears throat> what do I know? Well, first of all, if this is a horizontal line, I know that the y coordinate of this point, let's actually do that in a different color here. Oh, that's a big eraser. Okay, so the y coordinate of this point must also be 3. It's at the same height. Correct? Okay, good. Well, what else do I know? Well, I know that it lies directly in the middle of this line segment. This is this horizontal line segment. This is the midpoint right here. Uh, it These two points are equidistant. That means the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here is exactly the same. So this must be the midpoint of this line. Well, how am I going to determine what the midpoint is? Well, I'm going to take the x-coordinate of uh, one of the points, negative 2. I'm going to add to it the x-coordinate of the other point, 1. And I'm going to divide that by 2. In other words, I'm going to take the average <clears throat> of those two points. So what I'm going to get, I'm going to get negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And negative 1 over 2, well, that's, that's negative 1 half. So my coordinate here is negative 1 over 2. So I was able to determine um, <clears throat> that point, okay, from uh, the using what I know about, okay, this axis of symmetry must be equidistant in using two points at the same height. Now, uh, for the axis of symmetry, I don't actually want a point. I want an equation. I want an equation of a vertical line. Well, the vertical line happens to pass through this point right here at x equals uh, negative one-half. So the equation for my vertical line is x equals negative one over two. So this is the equation of a vertical line. Uh, that's going to pass through the point negative 1 over 2, 3. So there is my axis of symmetry. I just determined that from this graph. Let's do another example. All right. Here we have a parabola that opens down. So a little review from the last video. It was a really kind of short video. Uh, you know, in all honesty, section 7.1 is really all about exploration. It didn't really require a video. So uh, in your exploration from 7.1, uh, we know here that, well, a is less than zero, right? We have a parabola that's that's opening down, correct? Good. So, but we're interested in the axis of symmetry this time, so I'm going to have a vertical line that passes directly through the center right here. goes down, 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 down. Okay, so let me see if I can find two points at the same height. Here we go. These two points look good right here. So what is this point? Well, this looks like the point uh, 0, 1. And this here looks like the point uh, 1, 2, 3, 1. So this looks like point 3, 1. Okay. Now, last time I actually determined what this coordinate is, but I don't really need to determine what that coordinate is because all I need to do is determine the x value. If I determine the x value, that's going to give me the axis of symmetry. Why? Because the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the coordinate with that x value. So 
How did I do that? Well, I took the average of these. So I have 0 plus 3 over 2. In other words, the x value here, if I were to take this point right here, is going to be 3 over 2 something. Well, 3 over 2 what? It's going to be 3 over 2 1. We know that right away because of the height. Okay, which tells me that x equals 3 over 2 is the equation for my axis of symmetry, the line that passes right down the middle of the uh, parabola intersects at a point actually called the vertex. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, <clears throat> estimating the vertex. I, I just talked about, well, what is a vertex, first of all? Okay, so the vertex is the either the highest point or the lowest point on a parabola. Okay, so here, in this case, we have a parabola that's opening down. It's going to be our highest point, and it's going to be the point that the axis of symmetry passes through. It's the only point that it passes through, so I have my axis of symmetry here, and it's going to pass through this point. So now I have a, uh, a graph here, and what I want to do is I want to try to estimate what that point is. Well, I can get the x-coordinate very accurately. And I can get the x-coordinate very accurately just from these two points right here. If I look at that point right there and I look at that point right there, they're at the same height. They're both at a height of 1, 2, 3. Is that 3? That is 3. Okay, so here we have the point 2, 3. Here we have the point uh, 1, 3. Which tells me that my equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals what? Well, I'm going to have 1 plus 2 over 2, which is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so x equals 3 over 2 is the equation for the axis of symmetry, which means that the x coordinate of my vertex is going to be 3 over, uh, sorry, 3 over 2, 3 over 2 something. We don't know. Well, here, we're going to kind of have to guess because we don't really know at this point. There are other ways to determine the exact value of the vertex. Sometimes when we have the equation or, 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 or with, a, with a nice graph. Uh, but right now, we're asked to just sort of estimate. Well, we know it is slightly larger than uh, 1, 2, 3. Okay, it's definitely less than 4. It's maybe a quarter of the way up. We could say it's maybe a quarter of the way up. So we might say that that's three and a quarter. And for now, that's fine. What's important? Well, being able to determine the exact x value right now and understanding what is the vertex? What is it? Okay, well, this time I have an equation and its graph. How can I determine the vertex? And notice here, I don't use the word estimate. I use the word determine. Okay, so I have the graph here and down below here, I have the equation. The equation for this parabola is y equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 1. Okay, well, I can use <clears throat> the same strategy here. In fact, this might even be the same graph. Uh, nope, here I have uh, 2, 1, 2, 3. Here are the point 2, 3. And here I have the point 1, 3. Okay, and so our axis of symmetry is 1 plus 2 over 2 or 3 over 2. So x equals 3 over 2 is our axis of symmetry. Well, how is that going to help us? Well, we know our vertex lies on this graph. So this is our vertex. And we happen to know that it is at the point 3 over 2 y for some y. We don't know. Well, we also have the equation for this. So if I were to come down here, I could say, well, okay, well, look at this. I know that at the point 3 over 2, that's where my vertex occurs. So what do I get? I get y is equal to negative 
3 over 2 squared plus 3 times 3 over 2 plus 1. Well, what do I get? I'm going to have, whoops, a little bit too far there, negative 9 over 4 plus 9 over 2 plus 1. Well, what is what happens here? So how do I need to go back? I'm adding fractions. You never thought you'd be doing this again, eh? Well, yeah, it comes back. Negative 9 over 4 plus 18 over 4 plus 1, which is equal to what? That's equal to 9 over 4 plus 1. Well, what's this? This is... Two and a quarter plus one, which is equal to three and a quarter. Well, hey, you know what? That was the same parabola, wasn't it? So our vertex, I probably did it on purpose and I forgot. Our vertex here is exactly three over two and three and a quarter. And I've done that by using the graph and the equation uh, together. Okay, let's have a look at um, one last concept here. And we'll, try, we'll try to wrap this up real quick because the video is getting a little long. But we want to talk a little bit about domain and range minimums and maximums uh, for quadratic relations. Anytime A is greater than zero, you're going to have... It's, you have a parabola that opens up, okay, and so this opens up, and if it opens up, it's going to have a minimum value. So as you can see in this parabola here, the parabola opens up, the smallest value actually occurs at the vertex, right? So here, minimum value occurs at the vertex. I guess I don't have to write this since this is in a video, and you could always just, you know, rewind that, right? Yeah, the minimum occurs at the vertex. Okay, so I have my vertex here. Okay, so here's my vertex. And that's, of course, going to affect your range, right? Domain of all quadratics, domain here is always all real numbers. Doesn't matter if it opens up, doesn't matter if it opens down. So main of your quadratic uh, relation is always all real numbers. Okay, your range, however, is limited. Okay, it's always going to be um, greater than or equal to your minimum value, or it's going to be less than or equal to your maximum value. So let's have a look here. What do I want to know? What is the domain of this relation? Well, I, I just said the domain of all quadratics here is all real numbers. So here I can just say x is an element of the real numbers. That would be just fine. Okay, well, what is the range of the relation? Well, we know it opens up and it has a minimum. So all values of y here are greater than this value right here, which happens to land, I believe, right on the x-axis. Yep, looks like it lands right on the x-axis. So here what we can do is we can say y... is greater than or equal to zero and that uh, y is an element of the real numbers. Does the relation have a minimum value? Or sorry, does it have a maximum value? It does not have a maximum value. No, it has a minimum value. It opens up. Okay. One last example. Here we go. We have another parabola. This time it's opening down. What is the domain of the relation? Well, it's the exact same thing. X is an element of the real numbers. Always the case for our, uh, our parabolas. What is the range of the relation? Well, this is what's restricted. Okay, this time it's opening down. It's gonna have a maximum. Okay, and <clears throat> here it's really hard to tell, right? So here we would actually 
have to do what? We would have to calculate the vertex. Okay, so this one's a little bit more involved. So here we go. Well, I know this number, and I know this number. Okay, that's that, that's zero, that's one. Halfway in between here is going to be negative one. So I know the vertex happens at x equals negative one. So uh, here I have the point, uh, sorry, not negative one, uh, negative uh, one half. I have the point negative one half y for my vertex. And at that y coordinate, that's actually going to be my maximum value. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to say, well, y is equal to what? y is equal to negative 2 times negative 1 half squared. It's starting to go funny on me. Minus 2 times negative 1 half. plus 1, and let's simplify. What do we get? Well, <clears throat> that's going to be negative 2 times 1 quarter uh, negative 2 times negative 1 half will simply give me plus 1 and plus 1. Okay, continuing to simplify, what do I have? Negative 2 times a quarter is going to give me negative half plus 2, which is equal to 1 and 1 half. Or you could say that that's 3 over 2. And that actually looks to be very, it looks to be right, right? We see that this is 1, that's about halfway up, it's 1 and a half. Okay, so when we're coming down here, what is the range of the relation? Well, I know that uh, y is less than or equal to 1.5, and y is an element of the real numbers. Does the relation have a maximum? Yes, it does. Does it have a minimum? No, it does not. It's either going to have one or the other, but not both. And that is it for section 7.2. We'll see you in section 7.3.